Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you installed your Atomsphere processes from the process library and created your Salesforce request profiles. It's now time to learn what an MDM model is and how we can use that Atomsphere profile to help create the MDM model. So we are now ready to create our first model. So let's take a moment to discuss the different aspects that actually make up the model itself. Now, a model is made up of four primary parts, fields, match rules, data quality, and tags. So to discuss these briefly, fields represent an individual piece of data that you want to pass into your MDM repository. These fields make up your golden records. Match rules look at the incoming data and verifies whether it should create a new golden record or if it should update an existing golden record with that particular set of data. Data quality steps add extra levels of validation and enrichment within the MDM platform. And tags help you group golden records into custom categories for easier filtering and reporting. So let's start by taking a closer look at fields and what they contribute to the MDM model. By definition, a field is a component of a model that contains a single data item or specifies a property of an object. For our purposes, our fields are going to represent separate pieces of contact information for our clients. So for example, our client's name, address, and email are three different fields that we're going to have. There are three ways to create a field. You can manually create a field, and this works exactly like creating a field manually in an Atomsphere profile. You can import fields using a pre-created profile located in Atomsphere, and this is what we're going to actually do once we get to that exercise. And you can use the Suggest Fields button to harness the power of Boomi Suggest to give you a common list of fields for a given domain. Now, if we select the Import from Profile option, it's going to allow us to choose an existing profile from within the Atomsphere platform. You can import any profile that is in XML, JSON, or database format. And in our upcoming exercise, we're actually going to use the profile that we just imported into our Salesforce operation. Now this import is going to take the Atomsphere profile and upload a list of all of the elements within it. You will then have the ability to choose which elements will be accepted into the MDM repository and which fields you would like to keep out. This will allow you to create a comprehensive profile to use in the Atomsphere platform while giving you more control over the data within the MDM platform. Another option you have is to use the MDM Boomi Suggest option. The Boomi Suggest tool for MDM can suggest fields for you by leveraging the intelligence of the collective users of the Boomi community. When you choose this option, it's going to open up a list of common domains, such as customer, location, vendor, etc., and common fields used by other Boomi users for that particular domain. This is a great way to get started if you don't have any rigid requirements already set in place for your particular domain choice. As you can see, this is another correlation between Atomsphere and MDM. This feature works just like the Boomi Suggest feature for mapping in the Atomsphere platform. So if you click on a domain choice, such as employee, it will open a new window that identifies your domain choice, and it gives you a list of the high, medium, and low confidence field matches. This will give you a head start and may even provide you with some guidance when choosing which elements to include in your particular model. There is one more topic I'd like to discuss before we move into our next exercise. Our integration scenario for today has us working with one of the more popular CRM SaaS applications on the market, Salesforce.com. You may be familiar with or are even currently using Salesforce. However, some of you may not be familiar with Salesforce. Therefore, before delving into the actual building of the integration, let's take a moment to review the basics of Salesforce. Salesforce is an online, web-based customer relationship management application that is accessible from Salesforce.com. And what it does? Salesforce captures and organizes communications and information for current or prospective customers from many departments across a company. It's simple to use and works very well with both the Atomsphere and MDM platforms, so it's a great place to start when learning about what MDM can do. Now that we have at least a basic understanding of what Salesforce is, it's time for me to demonstrate exercise number five, where we will create our contact model. Once again, feel free to follow along in the activity guide as I demonstrate exercise number five, and you will have time to complete the exercise yourself after the video has finished. I'm going to go ahead and move back over into the Atomsphere platform where we left off. 
And what I'll need to do is click the Save and Close button to ensure that my changes have been made before moving any further. Once complete, I can click the OK button. And then finally, you may need to click the Lock and Edit button down here in the lower left hand corner of the process window before you can actually save your changes on the process level. Once saved, I'm ready to move forward. Once your process has been saved, you will need to navigate back to the MDM platform. Since I have my MDM tab open, I can simply click on the tab to get back to the MDM platform. To create a model, you will need to click on the Models tab located in the MDM Lifecycle panel. Since this is your first model, you will be brought to the Model Introduction screen. You may review the description provided to learn some key information about the Models tab and select the Create Your First Model button once you've finished. A new window will appear which will allow you to create your first model. And of course, the first thing that we need to do is select or create our model name. So if you click in the field next to model name up in the upper left hand corner, you can name this model contact. Now that our model is named, we can go ahead and look to see the four different sub tabs that we have here. We have the fields tab, the match rules sub tab, the data quality sub tab, and the tags sub tab. We're going to start by clicking on the Add Your First Field button, which will allow us to choose from our three different options. We can import from our profile, we can use the MDM Suggest feature, or you can click on the No Thanks I'll Add Fields Manually feature if you'd like to create a profile or model manually. For our use case, we're actually going to import from the profile that we created earlier in one of our earlier exercises. A new window will appear which will allow us to choose the profile type. If we click on the drop down, we can see that we have three different options. We have XML, JSON, and database. Our request that is coming from salesforce.com is actually going to be in XML format, so we're going to select the default of XML. And to choose the profile from the Atomsphere platform, we can simply click on this Choose field here, so you can click anywhere in here to send a drop down. And now we can simply click on the plus sign next to Master Data Management 1. And we can see that we have our Salesforce Contact Query Response Profile that we created earlier. You can simply click on that profile, which will select it. And then you can click on Next. From here, this gives us the ability to select the elements that we want to keep and the elements that we do not want to keep. We can then click on Next, which will bring up all of the different fields that we have available to us from that profile. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this model is the, going to be the model for our golden records. And the rule of thumb with a golden record is that you don't want to include all fields possible that. Uh, the rule with golden records is that you don't want to include every single possible field that exists from a certain profile. Instead, you should only include the fields that you share between your other sources. Any field that is used only by the source of record should not be included in that golden record. The only exception are fields necessary for references. So for instance, the Salesforce ID field will only be used by Salesforce, but it should be included in the golden record so that Salesforce can identify that record in the future. Since we have a large number of fields to choose from, you will need to click on the Deselect All button at the top left side of the window. This will deselect all fields, which will allow you to select only the few fields that we want to keep. Now out of this large list of fields that we have available to us, we're actually going to keep nine of them. So we're going to keep the account ID, so we can click that checkbox next to account ID, and now that will be included in our model. We can then click last name and first name as well. On this screen, we can also click name and then scroll down a little bit until we see the mailing street. You can then select mailing street, scroll down a little further to find phone, scroll down a little further to find email, and scroll down until we can find the create date and the last modified date. Once you've selected all nine, you can then click on the Finish button, which will then import those fields into your new model. 
Once you've confirmed that you have all of the fields that you want, you can then go ahead and click on the Save as Draft button up in the upper right corner of the screen. Once you have verified that all of the fields that you'd like to choose have been included in this model, you can go to the upper right corner of the screen and click Save as Draft, and your progress on your current model will be saved. So now it's your turn to complete exercise number five. Once you've created your contact model, you may begin the next video.